Welcome to Ogo Reviews. In this edition, we're going to be looking at how to draw organic molecules in different conformations using the Newman projection and how to predict the stability of these molecules. So let's get into it. So conformations pretty much tells us how the molecules are arranged by rotating some of the bonds, especially single bonds. So let's illustrate this with the structure of butane. So butane is a four carbon hydrocarbon. It has a CH3 group at the end and it has CH2 groups in between. These single bonds can be rotated around 360 degrees. And every time you rotate these bonds, the molecules are gonna assume a different conformation. So for instance, you're gonna have a structure where the methyl groups are both facing up and you're going to have structures in which one is facing up and the other one is facing down. So all of these are different conformations and several of them. And again, this single bond can also rotate as well. Now let's take a look at what Newman projection is. So Newman projection is just looking at the molecule by focusing on one bond and one element at a time or groups. And also you kind of, when you focus on one bond, you're looking at two different groups. So you have the front group and then you have the back group. So let's draw the structure of butane one more time, but this time we're gonna focus on just one bond. So let's assume that our eye is at this angle and we're looking down this bond. When you focus on just this bond, you'll find out that there are groups at the back and then there'll be some groups in the front. So let's draw it in another perspective. So we have just a single bond we're focusing on. And we have a methyl group that is going down and then you have a methyl group that is going up. If your eye is on this side, guess what? You're gonna see groups that are pointing towards you and groups that are pointing away from you. The same thing here, you're gonna see groups that are pointing towards you and groups that are pointing away from you. So in this case, we're gonna have the blue hydrogens that are facing you and you're gonna have the green hydrogens that are facing away from you. As you can see, uh, illustrated in the model kit as shown. Because we now see this, we basically can divide it, the whole molecule into two parts. You're gonna have the front and you're gonna have the back groups. So looking at the front group, because if you look down this carbon, you will not be able to see the back carbon. And you can see that in the model kit as well. It's very hard looking down this angle and being able to locate that back carbon. So in order to represent this as a Newman projection, you use the point of contact for the front and then the back carbon is made as a circle, as a larger circle. And you will realize that the methyl group is pointing down. In this case, these are the groups that are facing you. And then the blue hydrogens will be pointing up, as you can see in the model kit. So these two hydrogens will be pointing up. What will happen in the back structure is that you're going to have a methyl group that is pointing up. So you have a CA3 group pointing up. And then you have the green hydrogens pointing down. This is what we call the Newman projection. Best, just by looking at one part of the structure or just looking at one atom or bond, you'll be able to tell the different arrangements of the different groups on, on, the, on the molecule. This is kind of used for molecules that are, uh, as you say, are very small in nature, uh, small molecules. So based on this, we can call this 
is target confirmation. So this is called target confirmation. But because the larger groups on this on this molecule are on opposite side of the structure, we call it an anti staggered so anti periplanar staggered so let's take a look at how if you held the back groups fixed and rotated the front groups what are the likely conformations you're going to have and the uh, relative stability now if you were to keep the back groups fixed and rotate the front groups you're going to realize that this methyl group can be moved let's say let's do it 60 degrees clockwise that methyl group moves 60 degrees, the hydrogen will move 60 degrees, and the hydrogen moves 60 degrees. So if we were to do a 60 degrees clockwise, this is what we're going to get. You're going to get your front groups. Now the methyl group is positioned this way, and your hydrogens are positioned that way. So you're going to have your blue hydrogens positioned this way, as you can see in the model kit. So guess what? The back groups are still the same. You have your CH3 groups at the back and your green hydrogens are also at the back. This type of conformation is what we call the eclipse. As you can see in the model kit, these two groups, these hydrogens and these methyl and hydrogen groups are kind of eclipsing each other. So because of that, we will call this eclipsed conformation. Now, if you did another 60 degrees clockwise rotation, the, met the methyl group will move here. The hydrogen moves there. This other hydrogen moves here. So it's like a steering wheel, right? So again, you draw your, your conformation. Now your methyl group is right here. You draw that. Your hydrogens move down and the other one moves to the side. So you have your blue hydrogens and you have your back groups. So the back groups stay fixed. So you have CH3 groups and your green hydrogens will nicely be pointing down. This is gonna be a staggered, but this is a different type of staggered because the methyl groups, which are the larger groups, are closer to each other. And we call this a staggered, of course, but then what kind of staggered confirmation is this? This is going to be what we call a gouge staggered because these groups are kind of closer to each other. Now, if, if I went ahead and did another 60 degrees clockwise rotation, then I expect this methyl group to move there, the hydrogen moves here, and that one hydrogen moves there. So guess what? We're going to have an eclipse conformation. So let's see how that looks. So you draw this you can put your back groups there it doesn't hurt you can put your green groups and then we can now begin to look at the front groups so now the methyl group is eclipsing with the other methyl group you have your blue hydrogens in the front so you have hydrogen here and hydrogen there so as you can see in the model kit there is an eclipse and the methyl groups are kind of very close to each other as you see in the model kit and therefore it tends to be one of the most unstable conformations for butane so again this is going to be the name for this is going to be what eclipse and because the, the larger groups are on the same side of the structure uh, we call it a sin eclipse if you did another 60 degrees rotation you're going to get uh, another staggered conformation. Uh, so what will happen is this methyl group moves there, this hydrogen moves here, that hydrogen moves there. So guess what? You're going to have a circle. You have your back groups. You have the CH3s at the back with your green hydrogens. And let's see how the front is going to look. So you have your front groups. Now your methyl group is right here. And guess what? Your hydrogen moves down and the other one moves up. So you're going to have your blue hydrogens in the front moving up and down. Now, this, like we mentioned, is going to be what? 
it's going to be a staggered confirmation. And if you can see staggered and uh, gauchy here, it's almost the same thing as you see over there. So we're going to name this as staggered. But then it's going to be a gauch staggered. So this gauch staggered and that gauch staggered are the same. If you did another 60 degrees, again, this methyl group moves there, that one moves there, so you're going to have an eclipse. So let's draw that out. Your, your back groups are still the same. You kept them fixed. So you have your H here, H there. And the front groups, again, your methyl group moves here. Your hydrogen moves there. Those are the blue hydrogens because they're in the front. And then the other hydrogen, I should say, moves there. So there's an overlap. So you're going to have another hydrogen right here. So this, of course, is going to be an eclipse, all right, um, as we see up here. So this is going to be another eclipse. Now, let's try and do another um, 60 degrees. And guess what? If you did another 60 degrees, you're going to get back your anti target because this, this methyl group is going to move here. The hydrogen moves there. And this hydrogen moves here. So you're going to get that structure one more time. So this is a 360 degrees rotation of the front groups and how uh, they're going to look. So the question is, which one is more stable? So we say that the stable ones, so stability, we're going to arrange them in terms of increasing order of stability. So we know that the staggered are more stable. So this is this is staggered, that is staggered. That's target. We have three target that are more stable. So we're going to say the out of among these target conformations, they are more stable than anything that is eclipsed. So let's arrange within this three target conformation which one is going to be more stable. Of course, the anti target is going to be more stable because the larger groups are on opposite side of the structure. It's going to be more stable than the gauch, the, the gauch is staggered, right? So both of them are the same. So this is more stable than the gauch staggered, which have the same energy. And then we are done with the, the staggered. If you look at the eclipse, there are two eclipse structures that are the same. So these two eclipse structures are the same. And then we have a sin eclipse which is going to have the highest energy with the lowest stability. So we definitely know that the eclipse is going to be nest in terms of stability, and they are going to be more stable than the sin eclipse. So this is going to be an increase, decreasing order of, order of stability. So let's take a minute and look at the conformational energy diagram of butane. So you have the energy on the y-axis and you have the different conformations on the x-axis. So we will start off by looking at the diagram. So we have this, um, an up and down type of diagram and we're going to arrange it in terms of energy. So the most unstable form of the butane conformation has an energy of about 19, 19 kilojoules per mole. So the energy, the highest energy in the most unstable form, which is the sin eclipse, has an energy of about 19 kilojoules per mole. The lowest energy, which is the anti-conformation has a very low energy, close to about, let's say, one or two. The staggered conformations are usually the low points on this energy diagram. So we're going to have the staggered, staggered, staggered. We have two staggered, which are the same energy, and there's one that has a very low energy. And then we have eclipse conformation. We have three eclipse conformations. Two of them have the same energy, and one that has the highest energy. 
So to begin with, let's look at the extremes. So this is the highest energy corresponding to the eclipse confirmation. So let's draw that out. So to draw that, we have the eclipse that has CH3 groups here, CH3 groups. And you have your hydrogens showing. So you have the hydrogens, the blue hydrogens in the front and green hydrogens in behind it. So this is going to correspond to the highest energy of about 19 kilojoules per mole. Um, we're going to look at the lowest energy, which is going to be the anti-eclipse. So let's draw that one. So the lowest energy has the methyl groups on opposite sides. And you have your blue hydrogens pointing up. And your green hydrogens are going to be pointing down. So you have your green hydrogens. So let's bring the green hydrogens that are pointing down and facing in the back. So now that we have these two established, we can draw all the other staggered conformations as well. So let's look at a different staggered, staggered conformation, which is going to be Gauchi conformation, of course. So to draw that, you just draw the front. Your back is going to be CH3 groups. And of course, your green will be at the back. And now you're going to focus, this is going to be a staggered. So since it's a staggered, you can draw it like that. Okay. And you can do the same thing here. You have your CH3 at the back, the greens pointing down. And because it's staggered, you're going to draw it the same way that you see it right here. So let's try and fill in our CH3 groups. So in one of them, because it's a gouge, the CH3 is right next to the other CH3. And now that you fix that, you can easily put the other ones as the hydrogen. And then in the other conformation, you will have the CH3 group on the right side. And the hydrogens, the blue hydrogens, will nicely stagger with the other groups. So this will give us the energy diagram in a very short way. Uh, the staggered are all beneath and then the uh, eclipse are going to be on top. So let's try and draw the eclipse. So with the eclipse, we have this. Again, the back groups are the same. Your green hydrogens are pointing down. So since it's an eclipse, you're going to have your groups overlapping. So you have your, in this case, you have the hydrogens um, eclipsing with each other. So here you're going to have one being a CH3 group. You have a blue. So one of the, if you look at the um, overlap or the eclipse right here, you have the two hydrogens eclipsing. So in this case, one of the hydrogens is going to eclipse with the CH3 group. So you have one of these hydrogens eclipsing with the CH3 group. And the other one will be hydrogen. And then you draw the same thing on this side. You have your CA3 groups at the back with your green hydrogens pointing down. And then now we're going to draw the front groups overlapping with the other groups. So since the methyl group is on this hydrogen, in the other case, the methyl group will be on the hydrogen on the left. So I'm just going to draw the methyl group overlapping with the hydrogen on the left and my other hydrogens will overlap with the methyl group and the hydrogen. So with this, I'll be able to get a confirmation analysis of all the butane structures. However, the energy difference for, um, let's see, the energy difference for the other eclipse structures is about 16 kilojoules per mole. And the energy expended for the Gauchi is about 3.8 kilojoules per mole. Now let's take a minute and draw the most stable and least stable conformation of the following molecules. Uh, looking down the bond that has the arrow. So let's begin with number one. If we were to focus on number one, it means we're looking at this angle um, down this particular bond. So it puts this methyl group down and it puts this ethyl group up. 
So let's see how the other hydrogens are going to arrange. So I have two hydrogens that are sticking up and I have two hydrogens that are sticking down. So I'm going to use the same color code um, for the conformations. For the most stable form, of course, we're looking at the staggered conformation and which staggered conformation we're looking at the anti staggered. So let's begin off by looking at the front groups and the front groups will pretty much will have the methyl group going down and then the hydrogens which are blue hydrogens pointing up. How will the back groups look? It will have this ethyl group pointing up and then it has the green hydrogens pointing down. This is what is going to be the anti staggered and it's supposed to be the most stable. Let's take a minute and look at the least stable conformation. Of course the least stable is going to be the one that is eclipsed. So let's draw the back groups with our green hydrogens and let's draw the front groups. This time they are going to eclipse with each other. So you have the larger groups eclipsing. I mean to put blue, okay. So the blue hydrogens and the green will eclipse. And of course the ethyl and the methyl group are going to eclipse. So this is going to be your eclipse and it's going to be a sin eclipsed. And it's going to be the least stable. Next, let's look at number two. So in number two, we're focusing on this bond. And of course, if you did that, uh, it puts these hydrogens up and it puts this ethyl group down and puts this uh, tetbutyl group. So this is going to be our tetbutyl group up and it's going to put these hydrogens down. So let's see how the first uh, stable form is going to look like by looking at the Newman projection. So the front groups, again, we have our ethyl group down and we have our um, hydrogens pointing up. And then let's look at the back groups. So the back groups will have the Ted butyl group pointing up and you're going to have the green hydrogens pointing down. So this is going to be the most stable conformation. Let's look at this least stable conformation. It's going to be the sin eclipse. So again, let's look at the back groups, Ted Budo. It has the green hydrogens pointing down at the back group. And then let's look at the front groups. We'll have an eclipse and of course, the green and the blue eclipse, and then the ethyl and the tetbutyl are going to interact. So you expect the ethyl group to interact with the tetbutyl, and it's going to be very unstable. So this is going to be the least stable because of that interaction between the tetbutyl and the ethyl group. Looking at example three, we have a double bond uh, in the structure and looking at the bond that we want to focus on, it puts us into a different situation. So let's try and see how the conformation analysis will look like. We know that if you look down this bond, you're going to have these hydrogens sticking up already. And this hydrogen is going to be pointing down and the carbonyl is going to be pointing up in the back group. So this is going to be the back and this is going to be the front group. Let's see how the Newman projection will look like by looking at the back groups, which has the carbonyl and then the hydrogen pointing down. The front groups will have the blue hydrogens pointing up and then the methyl group pointing down. So you have your methyl group here and you have your blue hydrogens pointing up. This conformation where uh, you have the carbonyl not overlapping with anything is what we call the bisected. So this is not um, eclipse, um, it's not 
um, anything like Stargate or something like that. It is called bisected. Why do we call it bisected? If you look closely, you realize that the back group is a straight line. And it's pretty much going through this structure down this axis. And it becomes some kind of a division into two, so it's a bisected. If you begin to rotate the front groups by 60 degrees clockwise increments, uh, this methyl group is going to move there, the hydrogen moves here, and the hydrogen moves there. If you did that, the conformation analysis will show that the back groups will stay the same. The methyl group will move a little bit here, so it's going to be CA3 group here. And we know our hydrogen will overlap with the carbonyl, and the other hydrogen will move up there. So we have your blue hydrogens, one of them overlapping with the carbonyl. When it's an overlap, we will call this eclipse. Just eclipsed. It doesn't have any other name. Let's continue with further clockwise 60 degrees rotation. This is going to move there. That is going to move there. And that's going to move there. So the analysis will show that the carbonyl will be at the back. And of course, the methyl group will now move a little bit closer to the carbonyl. And your two hydrogens will look like this. So there will be uh, there will be no overlap with the carbonyl, so therefore we will call this a bisected. So it's just going to be bisected, eclipsed, bisected, eclipsed. So I'm just going to speed through the rest of this, so just stay um, and look at it. So after the last 60 degrees rotation, you're going to get back your dissected. So with, this will be the conformation uh, um, changes that you're going to see if you rotate the front groups. Uh, again, we're going to label these as B1. So the ones that are the same. So this bisected has the methyl group overlapping with the hydrogen. Uh, it's going to be B1. Let's look at another bisected right here. Uh, where the hydrogens are overlapping, that is going to be called B2. So there's another bisected right here. Uh, the same thing, you can see the energy is going to be the same, so we're going to call this B2. Now let's look at the eclipse conformations. So I have one eclipse here, I'm going to call this E1. Uh, in E1 we have the hydrogens overlapping with the carbonyl. Um, over here, we're going to call this E2 because the methyl group is overlapping with the carbonyl. And this is also going to be E1 because E1s here are the same. The energy analysis shows that the eclipse conformations uh, in this particular case are more stable relative to the bisected uh, conformation. The reason is that um, the pi bond that um, holds the oxygen and the carbon has what we call a, a pi anti bonding or what we say pi non bonding interaction with a sigma bond of the hydrogens. So if you looked at the uh, eclipse, uh, in this case, if you looked at the eclipse, uh, you will find out that the hydrogen up here will have that sigma bond interaction with a pi non-bonding. 
and the understanding is that that actually stabilizes this conformation more than if you had it in a dissected. So let's try and arrange the different um, um, bisected and eclipse in terms of energy. So looking at that, um, we will say that all the eclipses are better than the bisected. So we have E1 and E2. We will anticipate that E2 is going to have more energy because of the interaction between the methyl group and the oxygen. So it will have more energy, meaning it will be less stable compared to E1. So in, in terms of um, arrangement, we're going to say that the E1s will be more stable. So E1 is more stable than E2. Now let's come to the bisected. So we have bisected B1 and B2. If you look at B1 right here, um, the uh, interaction is between a CA3 and a hydrogen. Um, it doesn't have any um, hydrogen, hydrogen interaction. Whereas when you look at B2, uh, you see the interaction is between a hydrogen and a hydrogen. So the B2s will be relatively more stable compared to the B1. So again, after the E2, you're going to have uh, the you're going to have B2 and then B1 in that order. Because B1, remember, has a CA3 interacting with the hydrogen. And in B2, you only have hydrogens interacting with each other. So we expect that a B1 will be the one that is most unstable. So this is going to be a decreasing order of stability. Decreasing order of stability.